I kind of wish somebody had made this video for me 20 years ago when I started this job. And now it's two decades later, managing the bouncer at the door at a successful club. I've worked multiple jobs where we've had shootings, nights where I wasn't working because bouncers had attitude. Worked in clubs where there were fights every night, where girls were flashing me every night, throwing hundreds into my jacket to try to get into the club. I've seen every type of drama you can imagine. I've been swung at more times than you can imagine, taking down more people peacefully, safely, gently, without killing them by accidentally cracking the back of their head, without knocking them out unless I gave them a warning that if they came back, I would do so. Guys, this is a very physical job and it's very dangerous. One of the biggest, strongest guys who was a bouncer literally got covered in gasoline and spent the last year and eight months of his life in a hospital bed. It's an extremely dangerous, I don't want to say low paying job because it can be extremely lucrative if you get enough nights. At one point I bodyguarded, bodyguarded a US president for a day until I was fired 24 hours later for letting Rabbi Michael Lerner in, who was actually a friend of that president that I knew, but the Secret Service didn't approve it, yada yada. Those are big, big dollar jobs. And they want people who are trained, intelligent, strong, the complete package. If you're just going to work at a strip club or if you're just going to work at the dance club, the, the pay scale is going to be considerably less. But depending on the establishment, it could be several hundred dollars a night if you are seriously, seriously in the middle of the city. Um, I want to say I love this job. I want to say I hate this job. Both are true. You basically get paid to protect the house, to eject people who are violent or unruly or inappropriate, to make sure underage people don't get in, to make sure weapons don't get in, to make sure a gun never gets in, to check people's knives, which I've done many times. And I'm always friendly about it, and they're always apologetic. Hey, man, you know, I <laughs> used it twice in the last month. It's just peaceful. We live in a bad neighborhood. You know. I understand, sir, we'll have it here for you at the end of the night. You're not there to be their friend. You're definitely not there to admonish them or criticize them. And the less emotion that you show, the better. The less goofy you are, the better. You have to be serious and limit communication with the customers to help keep them alive and help keep your job alive. And I mean that. It's like driving a boat. If you guys have ever driven a boat, you can teach it to a child but literally you have to be 90 degrees perpendicular to the waves, you have to be focused. And if you check your cell phone, you're gonna be five degrees off. And every time exponentially that degree that you're off of focus limits your awareness and your perception and your position and your ability to guard the establishment. One of the first things they train me in is to never actually look at your coworkers, but look at the space around them. I mean, it's a safety situation. What we're dealing with is something we've had for thousands of years in society and culture, which is a celebration which involves intoxication, wildness, um, kind of like the pre-course where people meet to hook up. Uh, uh, off, you know, it's oftentimes there's fights, drama, break up there. I mean, a famous Japanese uh, ninja master who they wanted to wanted me to fly over to Japan and write a book about him decades ago said something very profound he said a substance which in a very small amount could bring you a bit of enlightenment and a larger amount could kill you and that's what this party is about that's what being a bouncer is about you're the one sober adult chaperone amongst a bunch of adults and if you don't know what 21 years ago today is by the day, you're not doing this job or else you have different duties, you know, within this job. But if you're a bouncer, you know the exact date today and what 21 years and one day was before this, because you know, you can, you know, you can be in serious trouble. Everybody in the establishment can lose their jobs. I used to work um, for the Lions Brothers um, over in Boston, Mamakin, Axis, Avalon, all those clubs way, way back in the day. And um, one night when I wasn't there, an underage girl was led into the back door. She was on MDMA. She overheated, passed away. 400 people on that block lost their jobs. 
the Lions group was forced to fire everyone. I hear Mike Tyson's voice on the YouTube in the background. Hold on a second. I'm gonna pause this video virtually. ChatGPT. So anyways, it's a crap job. It's not a career. It's not something you want to do for decades. It's something you get stuck in. There is such a ceiling. There's so much risk. Just make sure when you're patting somebody down, my last note, because I'd rather be doing Kung Fu videos than talking about bouncing. Um, some people don't, will never consent to somebody laying hands on them in any, in any freaking way. Some people are just very personal about their personal space. So, if you're a bouncer like me, make sure you tell people before they even empty their pockets, sir, if you could turn around, I'm gonna pat you down. Make sure you tell them that before they actually do it. They have to consent to it. It's not your right to do that. You're not informing them of something that you're gonna do. You're asking them to have that agreement before they step into your house. So you gotta be really careful about that because I freaked out about that myself when it was a business office. It was actually a government office. And the guy was like, turn around, empty your pot. I'm like, okay, turn around for me. He's like, yeah, put your arms out. And then I snapped at him. And <laughs> I was actually trained years later. The reason why we have the guests point their nose to the door and the reason why we tell them well before we're gonna frisk them down, check the front of their belt, up and down the legs. Of course, don't touch anywhere near the private area, but everywhere else, the front pockets, the back pockets, you like to, like to find stuff. What is this? What's that? Oh, it's a phone, sorry. Oh, it's, oh, that's my wallet. Oh, I forgot. What did I forget? Oh, I forgot. I just, it's, it's so small. I always just carried this around. I forgot about that, so. Yeah, you forgot, sure buddy. Yes sir, no problem. No, you don't say yeah, but remember, you never have attitude. That's the way you get killed and shot as a bouncer. Find stuff like this every night. Oh, that's fine sir, no apologies, we'll just, we'll hold this for you. And you can get it from me at the end of the night or from Jenny at the door, thank you. We'll put your name next to it. So, those are the big lessons. Find a real career where you can make six figures. Find, use this as a means to leverage yourself up, to, to do whatever else you wanted to do in life, which is gonna feed you and your family. But it ain't this. I mean, for some people it is. Some people are lifers, they love it. To them, it just feels like passive income and free money. I have to say, I don't not love it. I actually really kind of like it. There's music playing, there's hot chicks. It's a little bit fun. Is it as fun as my life and my free time? Nah, nowhere near. But it's not like hell or like really sucky, like some jobs. So that's my advice to you. 100%, if you're considering doing it and not doing it already, definitely don't. If you're not the type of person who could have somebody swing at you full force, take them down gently and give them a warning to leave without having the ego to have to knock them out or start a fist fight with them, then this is not the job for you. You have to be happy, egoless, and, um, and you have to have a really good thumb gouge to the eye. That's what a bouncer uh, in LA, Lower Alston, at the sill, at the silhouette taught me, Phil kid who's half my size and 10 times better a fighter taught me a great spinning back kick and I can't wait to actually have some space bring the tripod out and show you guys some of the leg skills because we've only really seen the stupid hand Jeet Kune Do stuff so um yeah you have to be ready to defend the house but at the same time you have to keep a positive non-emotional mindset about it. you can't be emotional at the door it's gonna lead to uh, a threat to your the longevity of your job and your co-workers and the atmosphere which you're trying to create which is basically the very serious firm 
upfront gate to this hedonistic Dionysian, if you guys haven't seen my video, the, the difference between Apollo and Dionysus, the god of reason and the god of wine, ain't no reason where anywhere where there's a bouncer. They're stupid by definition. And that's why bouncers are hired to be there. Because stupid people are gonna come in there during this Dionysian drunken wild celebration. So remember what I said, because it will save your life if you decide to do this. And it might save your life if you decide to do this. Don't be egotistical. Learn to de-escalate things. And plan for every situation. You know, the police are your friend. They see you with your knee on the back of somebody outside a big bar or club. Um, yeah. 99 times out of 100, they will arrest that guy and side with you and have no problem. But what if you're security at an underground medical marijuana dispensary, which is unlicensed, and you know that opening the door for police would equal your arrest, the fact that your kids might be out on the street? I can't really give, that's why I can't give blanket advice. It's such a nuanced job, but it, at every level, it involves those things. An absence of emotion and, and goofiness and anger and everything which the clients and guests are coming there to indulge in this whole show off show. Girls stripping there, you know? I had that happen. Girls literally pull out the most gorgeous set of tits and let me in. My boss is 20 feet away. I don't want to lose my job. I can't. People pushing hundreds into my jacket. Come on, let me in. Sometimes I will if, if no one's looking. So much stuff I can't talk about. So many unethical co-workers who were relieved of duty or even who weren't, who were doing unethical things related to the establishment, not related to the establishment. In closing, since this video is rambling into a nice, uh, nice long vid, I'll just say I used to manage a door in the Tenderloin where I hired four different guys. One was an Aikido master, one was a former Golden Gloves champ, I mean, I had every type of martial arts expert you could imagine. And always, better than any of those guys, the Eskrima, the Kali, the Krav Maga, any of those guys, are just huge, untrained men who I've seen several times when uh, somebody would take one of these toward the boss, literally open it up and attack the boss. They would just stand in the way, punch the guy. No martial art teaches you. Every martial art teaches you, like, you know, so... These martial arts guys were never as good as the huge, humongous, 300-pound, untrained guys who would beg me every night, Dan, Dan, teach me that stuff, and we'd be joking around like high school kids and having the best time, and I'd be showing them the martial arts and stuff. There's a reason why we always have at least one guy at the door who's twice the size of a normal human being, because it's so much easier for a man like that to put someone, notice I didn't say a man, man or a woman, I've seen it, girls are swinging at other girls, huge bouncer will put them in a head and arm choke and drag them out of the establishment. People can die that way. People can fall down, hit their head, glasses can break. That's a huge liability. So you're looking to stop fights peacefully. Sometimes peacefully means a very safe but firm head and arm choke. Um, or even just a headlock or a guillotine. I don't need that. <laughs> I actually have done this stuff for decades. I'm like the Japanese police without any loss to their dignity and with as much pain compliance as you could ever think of, I will walk them out of the club with a thumb lock because I'm not 300 pounds and can't pick them up by the neck like Darth Vader. But Japanese police taught me this and my Japanese friends in law enforcement and it works so well. This gyaku, I mean, because it's pretty much like a heel hook. There's a reason why they only teach heel hooks to purple and black belts because you're flexing a chopstick. It could break. You have to have expertise and gentleness. It's like being a mover. You can't just be a strong guy. You're gonna ding the walls. You're gonna ding the corner of the furniture. Being strong, is anyone strong? You need to have that gentleness and intelligence. That's what it takes to be a master mover and a master people mover because that's what you're doing, non-emotionally in a detached but focused and alert way as a bouncer 
as a lead door bouncer. You're directing people where to go. And ideally, that happens in a non-physical way. When you believe the times I've managed to avoid physical altercations, you will. Had it happen last week. Guy was being inappropriate. Are we gonna, you know, yeah, gotta remove him from the club. That couple was complaining. We don't need the liability. Drag him, ask him, ask him to come out to the door area, discuss it with all the other bouncers so that they can see what's happening. Make sure everyone visually sees the reprimand, that he can hear it, that he's outside. Sir, I, I need for you to come out with me and talk to me for a second. My name is Dan, I'm lead security here at the club. If I, just for a second, I need you to come out. We'll go right back, which is not true. And next thing, we're having a discussion with five of my colleagues. That's brilliant. I don't need this. Of course I've got this. Everyone's got that. What, I'm gonna jump, spin, kick him in the head? <laughs> Another thing that Phil taught me in LA, Lower Austin, Boston, Massachusetts, Austin, Massachusetts, at the sill, at the Silhouette Lounge where he's still the bouncer. This kid, again, is half my size, grew up fighting in Israel. He's got friggin' sidekicks that are as quick as my hands. But he was just and still is in such a good place in life. Just a happy, fat SOB. I mean, really almost has to stop himself from smiling. And when people would want to kind of like start stuff, he would always say the same line, the same line. Grab him by the bicep, control him. You don't want to do that, do you? Somehow when he said that, they, they kind of got it. They kind of got it. And this guy could, he could take your head off with the sidekick or he could snap and hold it that far from your nose like Jean-Claude Van Damme, literally. Like that, and pull it back. Man, thank you for teaching me that spinning back kick, Phil. I never thought I could do that. I freaking picked it up really quick. Man, he could knock people out with an inside bridge hand like that, but nobody would even see it coming. The person would just drop. This guy was an experienced martial artist. Just a finger-breaking badass. Taught me so much. And most of all, just taught me how to be a happy, happy person in touch with their emotions, be chill, be able to do this job without personalizing it and having it crush me and being a weight on my shoulders. I'm looking forward to it. I enjoy it. I project peace. And I love being with my colleagues. I have to put on a serious face, but inside people sense that there's a smile there and I love the men and women that work there. We're a family. If you have that type of attitude, somehow it will prevent it won't prevent drama. You're always going to have drama, but it will prevent static. It will prevent the drama from boiling over. Everything I'm talking about has to do with this very subtle, karmic, emotional, almost Jungian collective consciousness. You know what Jung called collective consciousness? The fact that we all live in one living mind, one living earth. We're all connected. So if I think something or feel something towards you, it's not like other animals. We just are all sensing stuff and fighting each other and fighting for for food and, <laughs> and mating and so forth. There's a collective intelligence and, and culture and society and that's where this game, this Dionysian intoxicated party that we've had for thousands of years occur. And that's where danger and fun and awesomeness occur. So remember your job, it's a great one. And if you are doing this, Visualize either you doing it at the highest level and making the most amount of money and being safest or using it to level yourself up like I'm doing into a job where I'll never need to do this shit again. This is not what I freaking went to grad school for. Peace.